Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to use the CG50 graphing calculator to solve uh, polynomial equations like this. So uh, the first step, uh, here we go, I am going to move into the graphing app and I will plot the function on the left hand side of the equals, x cubed, and then in my second uh, uh, plot I will do the function on the right hand side, the quadratic here, 2x squared plus x minus 15. Let's draw those to see what we have. So uh, the blue one's the cubic with the point of inflection, the red one looks like the uh, wood, or it is the quadratic, and uh, given that this is a positive coefficient it should be a minimum style quadratic, there's a minimum somewhere down below there. We could scroll down and search for that. Might have been quicker to zoom out. There we have it. Almost there. So there's the minimum. Now, the thing that I'm really interested in is the point when both of these functions are equal. In other words, what value of x gives the same y value? That's the point of intersection there. I can use gsolve to find the intersection. Now I only have two functions on display so it automatically defaults to using both the first and second one. There's my intersection. When x equals negative 2.0515 and so on, the y values of both functions are the same amount. So that's my solution. I can literally say here using gsolve on the graphic calculator and what's my solution? It is going to be x equals negative 2.0515. That's enough. And that's done. Isn't that nice? So perhaps there's another solution. If we zoom out a bit, Let's go up, it's a bit and have a look what's going on up there. Now, maybe, maybe there's another intersection somewhere. But if I scroll upwards a bit, I'll start to see that the cubic function, the blue one, it's rising more steeply than the red one, the quadratic. That's because it's a higher power. So as we continue upwards, the blue one will be steeper and steeper and therefore never get closer to the red one. These are not going to intersect as far as we go. There is a single intersection point between these two functions. And that's the one we found over here at negative two. Now there is another way we could think about doing this. Why don't I just uh, delete these? And let's take a look down here. Let's take a look at this. Now what have I done here? I've taken my original function and I've transposed so that it is in the standard form of a polynomial by subtracting x cubed. I have zero equals. Now if I plot this polynomial, here we go, negative x cubed plus 2x squared. Oh, I'm doing that wrong still in the indices there, so plus 2x squared plus x, take 15. Let's draw this one. There's only a single function this time, and what I'm looking for now is where this function equals zero. In other words, I'm looking for the, the root of the equation. Again, GSOL, roots, identifies that there is just this one value. Same value, of course. Uh, and that's another way of thinking about how to solve this. So again, I would say using gsolve, x equals negative 2.0515. How could we test this is true? We could substitute this back into x cubed. See what we get. Substitute this into the quadratic, and we should get the same amount. Alternately, we could substitute into here and see that we solve and get zero. 
uh, the one here would be done in exactly the same way. I'll leave that one for you uh, to try on your own. But uh, there is two different ways of doing this using the graphing app. There is, of course, another way. If we go back to the menu and we come down here to where it says equation, then I have a polynomial or I have a solver. Let's try polynomial because this is a polynomial. F2 for polynomial. Now I have to have my polynomial written in standard form this time and it is going to be a third degree polynomial. Now I write in the coefficients. A is negative 1, B is 2, C is positive 1 here, and D is negative 15. So there's my polynomial and I press solve. And here it is. It's told me that the first solution is negative 2.051, just what we thought. Now these other ones here that uh, have this strange I value, they mean complex solutions. So most of the time, unless you're doing uh, specialist maths, we won't worry about them. But uh, if we're just doing maths methods, anything like that we can ignore. We'll just take the ones which are real numbers. So we'll say there's one real solution. Uh, but as a cubic polynomial for the specialists, specialist maths people out there, you would know that a cubic has three solutions, some of which, two of which here are uh, complex. And as you would know, they are complex conjugates. That one there is negative 1.79, this one positive. But like I said, if you're doing maths methods, it's just the real solution we're interested in, which matched what we saw on the graph. If I go back to here, I could try F3 for solver. Now for F3, I get to type an equation. Uh, let me see how I have to do this. Ooh. Here we go, I can type this now. So I want to modify that slightly to read. That has to have an equals key. Now there is an equals key down here, shift decimal. And I wouldn't want that negative sign at the front. So negative x cubed, that's what, what am I saying? x cubed equals 2x squared plus x minus 15. So it's in exactly the way we originally had. Uh, if I then press execute and solve, it finds the answer for me, negative 2.05. It tells me the left-hand side equals negative 8.63 and the right-hand side evaluates to negative 8.63. There's an alternative way. So there's lots of different ways of solving polynomials like this on your graphing calculator. We could use the equation app down here. And from the equation app, we could either go polynomial or solver. Or as we saw, we could use the graphing app. And there were two different ways of this. We could graph the left and the right hand side separately and find the intersection point. Or we could rearrange into a standard polynomial and find the zero value, find the root of the equation. That's enough for now. Hope that helps.